Reflecting on work experience can be the bane of many students' lives. It can be difficult to know how to start, how to tailor it to your experiences, and to know how much is enough. I'm Arisma and I'm one of the senior tutors here at the Aspiring Medics and in today's video we're going to answer all of those questions and many more as we do a deep dive into reflecting for your work experience and your volunteering experiences. But before we start with today's video, make sure to check out our channel and subscribe as we post weekly videos to help you ace your med school application. Today's video is the third video in our work experience series and our previous two videos focus on what work experience is and what universities expect from you, as well as how you can secure free and online work experience very, very easily. So let's get started with today's video. In today's video, we're going to be giving you a reflection framework that you can use during your work experience or even later to reflect on all of your experiences. We're also going to be providing you with some templates to make this entire process of reflection more organized, more streamlined and more easy for you. We're also going to be looking at some examples of personal statements of real medical students and how they've reflected on work experience to give you a better idea of what medical schools are looking for. But before that, why reflect? What is the importance of reflection? Reflection is something that you are going to continuously do in your medical career, even when you're a doctor, whether it's portfolio sign offs or just a general checkup on how you're doing as a doctor, you will be reflecting on your strengths and weaknesses continuously. So it's a very good idea that you refine this skill of reflection as soon as possible. Reflection gives you the opportunity to assess what your strengths and weaknesses are and eventually work on those weaknesses and convert them to strengths. And it also gives you an idea of what skills are important for you to develop and how you can develop them you can look at other people's strengths what is something that someone else such as a doctor what have they done that's been really good that's really stood out to you and how can you incorporate that into your own life reflection is a great opportunity to improve your skills and learn from others so it's a really really key skill that medical schools are looking for so what is the STAR technique? The STAR technique is a reflection framework that all of us here at the Aspiring Medics recommend to all of you because it is a very good reflection framework that covers all the different aspects of reflection that medical schools are looking for. And each of these letters in the acronym STAR stands for something. So let's get into it. First of all, we have S and that stands for situation. So describe the situation that you were in. What were you asked to do? What were you supposed to do? What was someone else supposed to do? Remember, reflection may not just be on what you yourself have done, but you may be reflecting on what you've observed someone else doing as well during work experience. For example, a consultant having a conversation with another member of staff in the multidisciplinary team or a consultant explaining a diagnosis to a patient. These are all valid situations where you may be reflecting and learning from others. So describe that situation first. Next, T stands for task. What was the task required from you or the other person involved and why was it particularly important? Why is it particularly important for doctors to work in a multidisciplinary team, for example? Why is it important for them to patiently explain a diagnosis to a patient? These are questions that you should be asking yourself. Next up is A for action. What kind of actions did you or someone else have to undertake to complete this task? And was there anything that particularly stood out or something that you or someone else particularly did well? On the contrary, were there any obstacles that you had to face? And if so, what were they and how did you overcome them? The first R stands for result. What was the overall result of this task and of these actions? It doesn't necessarily have to be quantifiable, but it can be in some cases, such as the consultant helped X number of patients, but can also just be qualitative. For example, the consultant made me feel more comfortable or the consultant vastly improved the quality of the life of the patient by answering the questions empathetically. Finally, the last R stands for reflection. What do you think went well and what do you think went bad? Can you identify your strengths and weaknesses from this situation? If this situation arose again, how would you tackle it differently? Would you tackle it differently? Remember to keep in mind what your strengths were because those were things that you would carry on into the future and what your weaknesses were because these are things that you would change in the future. And lastly, what were your three key takeaways from this experience? These are just some of the questions that you can ask yourself through the STAR framework, which as I mentioned before, is a very comprehensive way for you to make sure that you're covering all the different aspects of reflection while you are reflecting on your work experience or your volunteering experiences. I can't stress how important this structure will be when you are reflecting on your work experience, whether it be the day after you do it or many months after your work experience. 
However, we're going to present some templates to you now that will make reflection much, much easier, allowing you to reflect simultaneously alongside your work experience. Here we have our experience bank, a free downloadable Google Doc that you can download from our website, link in bio that has a list of all the qualities that the medical school council expects all aspiring medics to have. Along with this, we've created a table with situation, task, action, result and reflection all the components of the star technique to make reflecting that much easier for you. In this way, you can organize your reflection skills and quality wise rather than experience wise. We also have a free notion template that you can use while applying to med schools, again available in our description box below. And this has everything you need to know about reflecting on work experience, including videos to help you out with this, the star technique, Gibbs reflective cycle, and a notion version of the experience bank. It also has a detailed how to section to make using the page that much easier. And lastly, we also have two examples of medical students filling out our template notion page on reflecting using the star technique for your reference so you can go through them and see what medical schools expect from you and how to make the best use of our notion page now let's get into some actual examples of reflective pieces that medical students have written in their personal statement to get into medical school so how did they use the star technique to reflect for their personal statement and how did this help them get into med school let's get into it. The first example that we will be looking at is an example of a candidate who was caring for a sick relative and how they reflected on this experience. Caring for a sick relative is an absolutely valid experience to include. It has definitely taught you more about being caring, being patient, and countless other skills and qualities that you can mention in both your personal statements and interviews. However, when talking about personal experiences, keep in mind that personal experiences are fair game for interviews, so don't mention anything that you wouldn't like to talk about at your interview. In all of our examples, we've color-coded certain phrases and certain sentences that align with the different parts of the STAR technique. Situation, task, action, result, and reflection, as you can see on the screen. And in this example, we can see how this candidate used the STAR technique to talk about the importance of a doctor, their empathy, and their communication skills in the care of their sick relative, and how it made the entire process that much more bearable for them. If you've looked after a family member or friend for an extended period of time, this is certainly something that you can include in your medicine personal statement. Getting a volunteering placement at a care home can be notoriously difficult. If you haven't already, I'd highly recommend watching our previous video on securing work experience and volunteering experiences that's up on the screen right now. In this, again, color-coded example of someone's personal statement, you can see how they spoke about the importance of holistic care in the well-being and safety of residents at a care home. With volunteering, it's highly recommended that you carry this out for a longer period of time so that you build an actual connection with either the residents at a care home or whatever volunteering experience you choose to do. It is better for you to volunteer once a week continuously for six months rather than every day for two weeks straight. Medical schools are looking for consistency on your part, the ability to stick to a project for six months rather than to rush and do it in two weeks. The next example we'd be looking at is from a GP practice and in this example you can see how the candidate reflects on the importance of tailored communication, specifically in the GP setting. They talk about how the GP tailored their communication according to the patient's ideas, concerns, and expectations, or ICE as it is popularly known in the medical community, as well as the patient's health literacy rates, and so on. Apart from reading up on the ICE model, you should also read up on the biopsychosocial model, very common in both general practice and in the hospital setting, because it makes sure that we look at patients as more than just a set of symptoms and a set of diseases. Patients are whole human beings whose health is impacted by multiple factors, not just the biology within their body. Other factors include their psychological state as well as their socioeconomic background, and more such factors are listed in the graphic here. Whether it be unemployment, work stress, family circumstances, or physical health, these are all wider determinants of health that doctors now need to increasingly look into. The next example we're looking at is from a hospital. One of the most popular questions we get here at the Aspiring Medics is how do I reflect on my work experience related to the experience related to skills that they're looking for in Aspiring Medics and also talk about how I possess these skills. It may all seem daunting at first but this example is a perfect example of how you can link all of that together. In this example the candidate has used the STAR technique to show an important skill of a doctor that they saw during work experience and how they have improved that skill in the extracurriculars or their volunteering experiences. Lastly, Let's look at an example from a surgical-based work experience. 
Surgery work experience can be a great way to be exposed to the importance of a multidisciplinary team or an MDT. In this example, the candidate uses the STAR technique to talk about how surgery vastly improved the patient's mobility as well as their quality of life. Remember, quality of life is a very, very key concept in medicine because we're working hard to make sure that patients live the best lives possible. All the examples from this video have been taken from our personal statement examples page, linked in the description box. Here, you'll find the largest collection of medicine personal statements from successful medical students from universities across the UK. We hope this video has been useful. Make sure to check out our work experience reflection templates both on Notion and Google Doc in the description box below. And comment down below what videos you'd like to see us create next. See you in the next one. Check out our free work experience guide for the most up-to-date and best advice on how you can secure online and in-person work experience. We've also got personal statement examples from our medical student tutors at all of the UK's medical schools, including Oxford, Cambridge, UCL and many more.